weeks. Uh, uh, for, for our building, have the carpet clean, some stuff like that, get everything ready. But we are, uh, that hasn't been done to this roof for 20 years. And so uh, we're going we're gonna to work on it a little bit. Need to know, uh, where's he at when you need him? You know, some that pitch and pitch it within, pitch it without. That'd work, wouldn't it? Uh, but tonight, I told you this morning, I'm going to tell, tell you how to live a long life. So here's what we're going to do tonight. Get your Bibles. We're going to do a little Bible study. I'll slow down from what I normally do. And uh, anybody in here want to die tonight? Anybody in here want to die tonight? Okay. I figured you did. You don't want to, and you don't want to tomorrow and the next day. You don't. Uh, people, people, uh, uh, it ain't, it ain't, when it comes right down to it, the human, we have something in us that'll fight to stay alive. We'll scratch, we'll claw, we'll do anything. If it comes right down to it, to stay alive. The strongest impulse you have is self-preservation. I mean, you'll stay alive at any cost. Do whatever you got to do. And so tonight, how, what does the Bible say about how to have a long life? And I'll just give you four little quick things. Take your Bible, turn to Proverbs chapter number 10. Proverbs chapter number 10. And uh, let's look at a verse of Scripture here. Now, I'm going to turn to these verses too. And I'll do a slow down just a little bit what I normally do and try to try to help you with this this evening. Okay? Proverbs chapter number 10. And look at verse number 27. Proverbs chapter number 10 and verse number 27. Look at that. The fear of the Lord. You see that? The fear of the Lord prolongeth days. Years of the wicked shall be shortened. Now basically what that verse is saying is, as a general rule, God live longer than people that live wicked. That's a general rule. There are always exceptions to the rule. People say, oh, I know a man that lived good. He, can. he got killed when he was 25. That's exception to the rule. Uh, people say, George Burns was 99, and he cussed God in the Bible and everything else. He's an exception to the rule. Those proverbs, those proverbs are general truths. That's what they are. I've heard people say that everything in Proverbs is an absolute promise, but they, you, can't, you can't take it like that. Uh, well, it told me one time, I had a bunch of people mad at me, and somebody sent me a verse that said, well, the Bible said if a man's ways please the Lord, he makes his enemies to be at peace with him. So if you was living right, your enemies would be at peace. I said, I know what that means. Jesus was living right, didn't he? Wasn't he? Did he have enemies? That's right. So you got to, you have to know how to you have to know how to look at those proverbs. So Proverbs said this: as a general rule, if you'll live right and serve God, your life will be longer and healthier and happier. As a general rule, you live wicked, your life will be more miserable and less healthy. Your body and your and it'll be shorter. So if I was you, I'd perk up tonight and let's try to do this. I I want to see my kids. I want to see my grandkids. I I want to see uh, my great grandkids if it's, if that's God's will sometime down the road. I don't I don't want to leave them. I want to make sure they're all saved and coming up, growing up right and having a church to go to, something to believe in and something to live for. So tonight we'll look at it these ways to lengthen your life. It's very simple. Take your Bible, turn to Exodus twenty. Back to your left there. The book of Exodus chapter number 20. Now let's do just a little quick Bible. Look at it. And I'll show you how to live right. Okay? I mean live long. Uh, Exodus chapter number 20. Here we go. Exodus chapter 20. You know what's in Exodus 20, don't you? Them 10 commandments. And of all those 10 commandments, there's only one of them that has a promise. Look at chapter 20 and verse 12. Exodus 20 and verse 12. Look at it. Honor thy father and thy mother that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The first way to live a long life is to honor and respect your parents. Honor and respect your parents. According to that verse right there, I know some little brats running around this country that ain't going to live too long. I mean, they treat their parents like... Uh, I heard of a man not long ago uh, of his mother was needing a load of firewood. And this man, she's old, lived by herself, and this man got a load of firewood and took it to his mama and made her pay him for it. Now, I'm going to tell you something, buddy. I mean, I mean, uh, that, I mean, the man might have been starving or something, but I'm telling you, that's not a good idea. That's not a good idea. You better make sure you honor your father 
and your mother. You know, when you're young, you think, oh, crazy, my daddy don't know. Hey, daddy, I don't listen to him. All right. And you know, the older you get, the more you realize your daddy really didn't know. I, I look back now, and uh, I, I didn't even think about it when I was growing up. But I look back now, and I thought, how did my daddy even make a living? How did he get by? How did he, he couldn't read. My dad couldn't read. I mean, mom, he finally learned how to, my mom taught him how to write his name and everything. He never went to school. Never did go to school. Maybe in first, second grade, something like that. Nobody made them in them mountains up yonder. And they just grew up. And I, somehow or another, he got by, got his driver's license, got his taxes done. Somehow or another, uh, he, he finagled around, finagled around. And I look back now and thought, how in the world did he do that not even knowing how to read? How did he even know where to go? Well, the sign couldn't read uh, the signs. And, uh, and I thought, you know, Dad, he had a lot more sense uh, than what I thought when I was little. The older you get, the more you realize your dad knew a lot of stuff. Now, there are situations, and very rare, sometimes where people have just a wicked, mean, evil daddy that beats you. Know, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not trying to make you feel bad or nothing. Sometimes your father might make it impossible for you to honor him or your mother. Uh, she might be mommy dearest, brother, uh, and, and make it impossible for you to honor her. But for the most part, for the most part, uh, you should honor your father and your mother. Amen? Uh, uh, when you're 14, you think your daddy's dumb. When you're 30, you realize he wasn't as dumb as you thought he was. Uh, and your mom too. Uh, they, daddy, somehow or another, if we had bills to pay, he'd go get a, get some, uh, trade somebody out of a gun, or he'd sell a dog and buy a dog and then sell that dog for $50 more than he paid for it or something like that. And somehow or another, he'd get them bills paid. Like, he'd just go do whatever. And I got, I got the same thing in me. I got the same thing in me. I mean, you'll do whatever you got to do uh, to pay your bill, take care of your family, right? I mean, you just do it. And you get that from your mother and your father. One time I was really, really down. I mean down, brother. No money, no no income, and all that. And I loaded up a bunch of stuff on Saturday morning, took it to ice full, so I thought nobody wouldn't know me, and sold stuff at the flea market to pay my bill. And I'm going to tell you something. I ain't too good to do that again either if I have to, and you're not either if you have to. And you know where I learned that? From my daddy. Uh, my daddy said, you don't go around begging. You don't go around and, and whine around and make everybody feel sorry for you. You get up and do what you got to do and get to work, brother. Get to work and make a living and provide for your family and put food on the table. I know people make their kids feel guilty and say, oh, good night. You know, you're poor. What, are you gonna, what are we going to do? Well, you need to go get you a job to help me pay the bill. Nothing wrong with a, with a big kid working. But I'm telling you tonight, we need to learn to honor our father and our mothers. Amen. That's right, brother. And those rock videos, some of those old wicked, wicked, wicked rock and roll videos, uh, they're some shooting their parents. And, you know, I remember I used to preach on all them songs. Sometimes that stuff, when I'm preaching, it comes back to my mind. I, remember that? I used to preach on that song when they come out on these little carts like a, like a little like a little bitty train or something. Like that. We don't need no education. I used to say, they're a bunch of idiots. I mean, I used to preach on that Pink Floyd or something. I don't know who that was. And I remember preaching on that and I said, we don't want our parents telling us what to do. Uh, gotta shoot your mama, kill your daddy, all that kind of stuff. And brother, that we have a generation. We have this generation coming up now. Listen, buddy. Well, you know what? Kids are supposed to be what? Seen and not or you can't even talk to some people for the little brats running around, pulling things, knocking things over, uh, turning the TV up and down and running through the house and everything. Listen, all you kids in here, listen to me. You better learn how to respect your mother and you better learn how to respect your daddy. You better. You want the Lord to get on you? You just disrespect your parents. Respect them. I didn't say you always agree with them. I didn't say they always right. But you respect them as your father and your mother. Amen? That's right. That's the first way to live a, a good, long life. I've seen them come out. Good night. I've seen them. That's the parents' fault. They come out of Walmart, boy, and dragging one about that high. And he's right his feet like this. She's just a dragging him. Come on, baby. Go, ah, ah, ah. Come on, baby. <laughs> I have a baby, your foot. That ain't no baby. Brat, what that is. Uh, but you know, listen, uh, learn how to respect them. Learn how to respect your mom and your dad. Number two, quickly, turn to Isaiah chapter 38. The book of Isaiah chapter number 38. And I'll show you another way of long. We got that down? Y'all going to respect your parents? Now, if they won't let you or they're estranged from you, and you can't, there's nothing you can do about it. But if you have the opportunity, 
Respect your parents. And by the way, let me tell all the young people in here, you better respect them try you can because they're not going to be here forever. You're going to lose your mom and your dad quicker than you think you are. I, if I had to do over, I'd do some things different. Now, I do say that I took mom places the last few years of her life. It started hitting me. She ain't always going to be here. And I, I, I'd take her and my Aunt Shirley, who's, who's going down to up there in Nebo tonight. I'd take them to Gatlinburg. And, oh, Lord, you, it, was, it was torture. Uh, but I, I prayed before I did. I said, God, help me. God, help me. God, help me. Help me to drive slow. Help me to behave. I mean, I wouldn't be to Asheville. And Mom would be beating the floor of her. Danny, slow down, son. Slow down, son. And I said, Lord, help me. I prayed God would help me have the right attitude and not be mean to my mom. And I, we went in there, and they'd want to go in them stores that says, as seen on TV. And they'd look at every single blessed thing in there. And I was around there like this, you know. And I didn't want to know. Boy, I thought, oh, i got to do this. i got to do this. I, then they wanted to uh, go to Fanny Farkle or whatever that is or, and get one of them big old nasty uh, uh, sa uh, sausages about with onions and green peppers and everything sit there and eat that I got gagged and I, I said good night how do y'all stand and, but I did it I did it and I'd sit there and I'd say where do you want to go now where do you want to go now and I want to just run off and do something and I thought you know, this is not, I got to honor my mother got to honor my mother I preached myself out of conviction and I did but I tell you what my daddy did daddy always wanted me to go coon hunting with him and I never would go. I had to preach somewhere. I had to go. I'm going to tell y'all. Better listen. If I had to do over. I'd get my boots on. And I'd go coon hunt with my daddy. I don't care if we had a big meeting at the church. The next night. I'd go coon hunt with my daddy. If he's back here. I feel bad about that. I, he'd say. You don't go with us Friday night? I'd say daddy. I, I don't, what in the world? I mean, I'm a lot like him in a lot of ways, but I thought, what in the world does anybody get out of, I mean, he knew, they knew all them dogs. They could tell which dog it was. They claimed they could. And them dogs go, oh, oh. Like, anybody ever heard old Blue? And they'd go, oh, hook, for it, hook, for it, hook, hook. They talk like that. Them dogs don't know what you're They're saying, look for it. Look for it. Talk to daddy. Talk to daddy. Like, I don't, I don't. That's you crazy. Dog can't talk. Uh, but somehow or another, they can figure out what that dog was doing by the way it barked. And daddy come home in the middle. I mean, oh gosh. He come home in the middle of the night one time, froze to death, soaking wet, got in the bed. Oh, oh, mom said, What in the world's wrong with you, Lawrence? And he had been out on a limb trying to trying to get a coon. Now they they bring him home and put him in a pen, you know, and train their dogs with. And he'd been out there trying to do it. And, Limb broke and he fell in the creek and busted a rib or two on them rocks. And he'd walk around there and wrap himself up and go to work the next day. I thought it was crazy. Uh, but if I had it to do over, how many of y'all, we got any old coon hunters left in here tonight? There's a few. There's a few. Uh, 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 Joe, you go coon hunting? Uh, I, I ain't saying it's wrong. I, just, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to get out of that. But I, if I had it to do over, I'd do that with my daddy. If your daddy's still here, you better do something with him a little bit. You better do something with him. They're not going to be here long. I was only in my 30s when my dad passed away, I think. I think, yeah. I think only in my 30s when daddy died. And I didn't expect it. I thought he'd just be here forever. But they're not. Honor thy father and thy mother. That the days may be long upon the earth. Got it, Isaiah? Isaiah 38. Isaiah 38. And look at verse number 2. Isaiah 38 and verse number 2. This is important. Well, look at verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. I mean, he's almost dead. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, big boy, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Pronounced his death sentence. You're going to die. You're sick. You're getting ready to die. He had coronavirus and the flu and heart attack and everything. I mean, he's getting ready to kick out of here. He was dead. He's gone. But look at verse number 2. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. He said, Remember me, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee, and went to Sunday school, and went to church, and, and gave out tracts, and truth and perfect heart, done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore, 
Then verse 4 said, The word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. You know how to live for a long life? Humble yourself to God. There is a case in the Bible where a man was sentenced to die and he's ready to die and he got down and said, God, I want, God, please remember me. God, I, Lord, I, I, please have mercy on me. And God said, all right, I'm going to give you 15 more years to live. Not a bad, that's not a bad prayer. That's not a bad prayer. You can pray one time and God gives you 15 more years of life. So the second way to live long is humbling yourself to God. Don't get so big nobody can't tell you nothing. Don't get so big you walk around with your head stuck up, stuck up like you're better than everybody else. I mean, you better, here's what you better learn how to do, people. Take it from me. Take it from anybody that's been here a while. You better learn how to stay humble. And not, not, you ain't nothing special. You ain't no better than nobody else. We're all sinners uh, saved by the grace of God. Ain't nobody no better than nobody else. You better stay humble. If you're, a, if you're a great athlete or you're a great success or you're a great preacher or you're a great singer, you better stay humble. You get that head shot off, you keep sticking it up there like that. I told them that's not. There's three rules, you know, they say, in the Army. In the Army, you learn three things. They said there's three things you got to learn how to do. Get down, stay down, don't get up. Get down, stay down, don't get up or you get shot. The same thing true in your Christian life. Get down, stay down, don't get up. If God blessed you with a lot and you're gifted or talented or smart or you're, you're an athletic or you're whatever, you're beautiful or good looking or uh, successful, if God blesses you with that, shout and enjoy it, but stay humble. Stay down. Stay down. Lord, I'm just, I ain't no better than nobody else. God, by the grace of God, I got what I got. You better learn how to stay humble. Oh, Hezekiah humbled himself and said, Lord, I don't deserve it. But, Lord, I've tried to live for you. God, I'm trying. And God gave that boy 15 more years to live. Think about that. Now you say, well, everybody's got a time. And when you die, you, uh, your time comes, you're going to die. He didn't. He had a time, and then the Lord changed it. You say, well, that was his time. Well, yeah, I guess the plan of God overall it was. I've heard people say, you can't go till your time comes. And, and that is true, but you can change it. You can make your time right now if you want to. <laughs> It'll be your time. Uh, yeah, you commit suicide. Be, you can make your time anytime you want to. Uh, but uh, uh, if you can't kill yourself, I guess it wasn't your time. Uh, I had one guy said, tried to kill himself one time and it didn't work. And they said, why'd you try to kill yourself? He said, because I've been a failure at everything I've ever tried to do. <laughs> That's not funny. Uh, but I, but listen, that ain't, that ain't, you, you, can make your, you can make your time. I like that guy said one time, this guy was trying to get him to go up in an airplane. He's scared to death. And he said, uh, he said, I ain't getting in that thing. Uh-uh, uh-uh, yeah. Oh, come on. He said, you can't go to your time, come. He said, I know, I know. He said, well, come on, get in here. No, he said, I ain't getting up there I'll get killed. He said, well, you can't go to your time, come. You believe that, don't you? He said, yeah, but what if we get up there and your time comes? <laughs> yeah, if it's your time, I'm going down with you. So uh, it, was, it was Hezekiah's time. Then he prayed. And God extended it. The Lord's not bound to anything. He can, he can cross his own barriers whenever he wants to. And change things, like cross dispensational lines if he decides to. But listen to not, y'all. Listen, the man humbled himself and lived 15 years longer than what he should, would have. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. Number Deuteronomy chapter 25. Deuteronomy 25. Quickly tonight. Let's look at this. Then I'll get one more and we'll be done. Uh, Deuteronomy 25. Uh, here's how to live long. You want to live a long life? Amen. You won't get this in college. They don't even know it. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy 25 and verse number 15. Deuteronomy 25 and verse number 15. The Bible said, but thou shalt have a perfect and just weight. We are in Deuteronomy 25, 15. A perfect and just measure shalt thou have, that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God give thee. Be a perfect. Now, what does that mean? That means basically just being an honest, fair dealing individual. That's what that means. Don't be a crook. Don't be crooked. 
Have you ever knew somebody and everybody in the community said, well, don't ever do no business with him. He's a crook. Don't ever do no business with that. Don't buy no car from that guy. They, they're, um, they, they push them through them lines at them car sales. Some of them may have to push them through there. Uh, put nitroglycerin, jet fuel, no tell what in. Uh, to make, that's a humdinger right there, boy. I'll let you have that thing for $2,500 and it don't even make it home. And, and just lie and lie and lie. Now, you might get by like that a little while, but the Lord's finally going to even up the score, buddy. If you make a life, you listen to me, if you make a life of cheating people, it'll come back on you one of these days. It'll come back on you. I know, I know when I'm trying to sell a car to somebody and I know it's got a flaw, you think, well, see, that's the way that old mind works. Is that a good car? Yeah. In the back of my mind saying, yeah. I can hear my mom saying, Danny, you treat people the way you'd want them to treat you. I said, but if I do, he won't buy it. And the Lord says, I'm in control of your health and your life. I'm in control. I said, you're right, Lord. Right. Don't, don't tell me your flesh don't wiggle with your income tax. We ain't going to get off on that. You know how I believe, brother. I believe the government's the crookedest thing in the world and don't give them a dime you don't have to. Amen. But you can't lie. You can't lie to them. I'll just lie to them. They're liars. I know they are. But the, lying to a liar ain't right. And I don't, you don't have to, you don't, you know how I feel. But I think, listen brother, when they, they take my tax money and pay for kids to have their gender changed, they pay, I pay for little babies to be murdered by the millions. I don't give them a dime. I don't have to. And they shouldn't. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Amen. 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 I, I, I don't fill out the long form. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. Steve's a genius on that. I ain't. Uh, uh, I, I know a guy that bought, bought some boots. And he said those work boots were work boots so he could claim them off on his taxes. And his tax man told him, he said, now you can't wear them boots nowhere but work or you can't claim them. There's where I just say, this is a bunch of baloney. I want to wear them to the dollar store. I'm going to wear them. If they let me have a time, who cares? Good. No, that's ridiculous. But, but, you got to be honest. Amen? It ain't going to hurt them boots to wear them. Uh, uh, call somebody about work while you're at the dollar store. Work involves boots. It's ridiculous. Shouldn't lie. Ain't none of their business no way where you wear your boots. Amen? Am I right, Brother Steve? I hope I'm right. I don't care if I am or not. I'm saying it. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I can't stand the government sticking their nose in every little. They going to have. That's why they're going to digital money. Paul. They don't want us making no money that they don't get their hands in. They're trying to fix it where I can't take you out here and sell you my guitar uh, for a hundred dollars. Oh, nope, got to be digital so we can get our part out. Listen, brother, if you want to buy somebody's guitar, or shotgun, or, or boat, or whatever, it ain't none of their business what you do with your money. But they don't look at it like that. But anyway, you got to be honest. You got to be honest. Amen. You got to be honest. They tell me, they say, now, Danny, you're a preacher. And if somebody gives you a love offering, you have to count that as income. I don't believe that. I don't. And I know if it's a lot of money and stuff like that, I get it. And I do estimate that. I do. I ain't, I ain't lying to you. I have done it many, many times. But they don't take out all the travel, all the fuel, all the wear and tear on your car. All, I, ain't, I ain't giving you a lecture on taxes and government tonight. But I, I'm just telling you. You make sure your heart stays right. Amen. And you don't cheat people. Amen. But if there's anybody you can come close to cheating, it's the government. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Lord, they're, they're crooked as a blessed dog's hind leg. Good night in the morning, y'all. And they're lecturing us. Oh, please. I didn't mean to get off on all that. The truth is, you got to be honest. You got to be honest. Man told me, he said, Danny, you want a bunch of money? And I said, yeah, sure. He said, I'll get you some money. I said, good, I can use it. He said, well, I had a hail storm not long ago. If you got some hail damage on your roof, I can get your insurance company to put you on a brand new roof. And then they were gonna have, you'll get like $10,000 and then you'll split it. And I said, well, to tell you the honest, I don't, honestly, I don't know if I got any hail damage or not. My roof's way up there. I can't even see it unless you climb up on the, it ain't leaking or nothing. I climb up there and look, I reckon. And I, I didn't have no hail damage. That's a scam. I said, that sounds crooked, brother. And he said, no, that's why we pay insurance. 
Now, if you really do got hell damage, let them pay for it. Because we sure do give them a lot of money. Amen? Amen, brother. I, my, my house insurance it went crazy just this year. And my house ain't that much. It ain't no better than it was last year. I, my taxes went up like, like I forgot how much, uh, almost 30% probably to what it was last year on my land. And that, that's crooked. They're cheating me. Uh, but I'm saying if you want to live a long life, be honest and tell people right, you ain't supposed to just deliberately cheat somebody. Example, I was in Walmart one day, and I come around, there's people walking around this way, and, right now, and I look, and there's some money laying in the aisle. I forgot what it was. It might have been 10 or $15. And I picked it up, and I looked around, and I thought, I said, sir, is this yours? Because there again, I could hear my mom, mom preaching to me in my head. You do other people like you'd want them. What if it's you? If you, if you dropped your money in, wouldn't you want if you lost your wallet, you men, you got your credit cards in there, you got your cash in there, you got your driver's license, you got important things in there. If you dropped your wallet out in the parking lot of Walmart, would you want somebody to come and say, hey, I got your wallet? Yes, you would. I was preaching up in, I was preaching up in uh, Kentucky, and I was, a lot of times I stick my wallet right down in that little side thing in the door. And that's not a good idea because sometimes when you open the door, it'll fall out. And sure enough, it fell out, and I didn't know it. And I got back to the motel that night, and I didn't have my wallet. And I panicked. And I went out and walked all over the place. I walked out in the parking lot. I looked underneath the cars. I thought, oh, Lord, I called the pastor. I said, preacher, will y'all look in there and see that in the parking lot? We looked all over the church parking lot. I mean, my driver's license. I didn't have no money to get home on. I thought, oh, Lord, please, oh, Lord, please. And I'll be in a little bit. My phone, somebody called and said that the, they had at the police station, somebody had found my wallet and turned in the police and they brought it to me. I said, Woo! Hallelujah! A good Samaritan. Now, if it had been the other way around and I found somebody else's wallet, it had $1,000 in it, I didn't have that in mind. I believe we should have done the same thing. Just like you'd want them. And, and I'm telling you, it'll come back to you. You treat people right, it come back. Mine came back. That made me think of that time. I went on around the corner, and this lady was pushing a buggy and had a little baby in it. And I said, ma'am, is this your money? And she looked and she said, yes, he had it playing with it. I said, thank you so much. That woman got up there and not had money to pay for her stuff. And she thanked me and thanked me. And whenever I do that, I say, thank Jesus. It's because of him. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have done that. Wasn't for Jesus, I just stuck it in my pocket. I claimed your favorite verse: "Finders, keepers, losers, weepers." <laughs> that ain't the Bible. That ain't the Bible. That's some people's favorite verse. You say, "Oh, buddy, if I found a hundred dollars, I'd stick it in my pocket." Well, if you dropped a hundred, would you want somebody to stick it in their pocket? Just treat people. The, it's all simple. You treat people the way you'd want them to treat you. Amen. Jesus said that, and then a smarter thing ever been said on the No religious Socrates and Aristotle and Plato and all Hindus and religious leaders. Nobody's ever said nothing that genius. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And when I didn't, I paid for it. And when I did, God blessed me for it. You want to live a long life? That's right. That's the way to do it. Be content with what you find. Sometimes when I go to the car wash, and I get ready to stick my money in the car wash, and there's a bunch of quarters up there somebody left. I think, whoo, free car wash today. And then I think, you know what? Some old, some old one might have left that there and going to come back and get it in a little bit. Well, if you don't get it, Brother Danny, some old drug addict will get it. They hang around car washes. That is true. But it, uh, that is true. I, drug addicts do hang around car wash because you, you can bum a lot of money like that. And uh, I... I, I didn't do it, and sometimes, I ain't bragging, but sometimes when I have extra quarters, I just leave them for the next one. You know where I get that? From the Old Testament where it said they plowed their field, and their field was, was square. You take a tractor and you plow around the field like that. It said leave them corners for the poor people. Leave them corners. You don't have to reap every single grain of corn and every single, put it in my bucket, put it in my bank account. You don't have to get every single, little, let, let some of it go once in a while. You want God to bless you? That's how to do it. That's what he said. Just wait. Just balance. Finally, I'll say this. I'm through. Deuteronomy chapter 4. 
Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 4, right back there. I'll show you another little simple truth. You want to live a long life? You want to die early like Mick Jagger? And Jim, uh, not Mick Jagger's going. I mean, he's one of the exceptions that ain't died. But like Jimi Hendrix did, and like Janis Joplin did, and like John Lennon did, and like uh, 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 all the Amy Winehouse did, and all those rock singers, you know what the Bible says? The Bible said that uh, uh, rock singers, I, Psalm 55, 23, average will not live out half their days. Here's how you live long. Deuteronomy 4.40. Deuteronomy 4 and verse 40. And I suppose, kids, you listen to this now. Listen. Deuteronomy 4.40. You don't live long by taking vitamins. You should. You don't live long by going to the gym and working out. You should. It ain't going to hurt you. But look at Deuteronomy 4 and verse number 40. It says this. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments which I command thee this day that it may go well with thee. See? Cars, houses, kids. You want things to go well? Keep his commandments. And that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The statutes that it may go well. Do right. Serve God. Now, I used to, every time my, we'd go to revival and stuff, my girls, uh, two of them sitting over there tonight, I pray for them every every day of their life. First thing in the morning, I get up and I pray for all of our family, all the kids, all the grandkids, sons and laws. Every every morning, I pray God bless them, protect them, give them health. I pray for a girl's health every morning, y'all. I pray for your health. Uh, I pray for. Debbie, my sister, I pray for her health every day, every single morning. And I pray for, for Kevin, Frankie, and, and uh, Ethan, and, and, and Molly. And then I go down the list praying for a bunch of uh, people. And sometimes I pray for all y'all that I can remember. I start going down through here, and I try to remember everybody, and they don't know here. I don't always do it, but I, I, I try to pray for you. And I say, Lord, bless them, keep them safe. God bless them, keep them safe. God bless them, keep them safe. Don't let one of them get sick. Don't let one of them get cancer. God, please, don't let one of them get, have a car. God don't listen buddy it happens to people every single day and it may happen to me tomorrow we don't know that but I'll tell you your best bet your best bet is to live right keep the commandments serve God and do the right thing that's why I think that's why I think you ought to go to church regular that's why I think you ought to go to, just honor God you know if you like to go fishing and it's a beautiful Sunday morning I mean good night y'all you know who's in charge of your health God is you know who's in charge keeps your heart beating God is. Honor Him. Put Him first. And He'll bless you for that. Right. Uh, Psalm 55, 23. says, Wicked men, or the, the wicked will not live out half their days. So if the average age of death is 75. Drug addicts, I'm not being ugly. We all know them. 36 is their lifespan. 36. Heavy partiers, people who party all the time, live it up, check out their 30s or 40s. Thousands of them. Thousands of them. People who live wicked and get drunk and drive fast and get in fights and go to bars, don't live a real long life as a general rule. You don't see many. They said this old man sitting out one time he was at the courthouse and they sitting there and good night. You could tell he was really, really old. And and a reporter came up to him and he said, How do you, how do you, how do you, what do you attribute your longevity to of living a long life? How, how'd you stay so, how do you live so long? He said, I get drunk twice a week, chase women, steal things, party, get a set pipe a night. He said, Really? He said, Yeah. He said, how old are you? He said, 29. <laughs> that's, what, that's what that stuff will do to you. Uh, you may think you're all cool because you're 20, 18. Uh, I got it, man. I can drink liquor. I go to them uh, parties at the beach, and we take them big old things and guzzle it down. For yeah, yeah. You, you won't last long like that. You may think you're all tough and cool. It'll get you. You keep going against God, you'll pay for it. It's a fixed law, brother. It's a fixed law. 
Now, as I said, none of us are promised tomorrow. We might all, we might all die tonight. I might fall over here before I get through preaching. You, we don't know that. But you got a lot better chance of living a long, happy life by living a clean life. A lot better. So there's something about sin. I, I think, I don't know this. It might be true to me. I don't know. I think sometimes when you really sin against God and you do something you know is ungodly and wicked, sometimes the Lord says, Bing! that little bitty seed of cancer gets right down in here. Might not come out for years. I can't prove that, but I've seen it over and over and over. And over. you say, Brother Danny, you scare me. Like We should be scared to do something wrong. And if you have done something wrong, do like Hezekiah. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I want to do right. God, get off my record. God, get it out of me. Cleanse, cleanse my body. I, we all got sin in us. And I pray. I pray that the Lord will take my sinful nature and wrap it up in like, like a tinfoil so it won't touch my body. I know that's crazy. But that's what I pray. I pray, Lord, put it, it's, it's in there. I can't get it out. But I pray the Lord will wrap it up so it won't infect the rest of me. And sometimes it does. I know that's crazy and you ain't never heard nobody say that. I ain't neither. But I, that's the way I, I feel like. If we can keep that sinful nature down and beat down and not let it do, not let it control us, your chances are a lot better of having a long, healthy life. Now, they sometimes you just have health problems and it and it's not even because of sin. We know that, obviously. Everybody, you got to get sick and die sometime. Everybody does. Greatest preachers, greatest soul winners, greatest... Something has to happen because this body's got sin in it. But the less the better, right? Less the better. Less you sin, the better off your chances are of having a healthy, happy life. That's how to live long. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Count, if you'll just come up here right quick and just play something soft. She's playing real, real soft. Maybe you're here tonight and you just want to say, you know what, Lord, I want to, I want to make a commitment to you. I'm not trying to bargain with you, God, but I do want my life to be blessed. And I want my home to be blessed and my kids, my grandkids, my family. So, Lord, I'm just going to say, Lord, get out, get the junk out of my life. Anything that ain't right, any bad movies you're watching or videos or something dirty or something you don't need to be involved in or the way you talk or something. Say, Lord, clean me up. Clean me up. The cleaner, the better. Cleaner, the better, brother. Amen. I mean, good night. I'm, I may have a. I may have a kidney stone in me right now. I probably do. As long as it don't move, I'll leave it alone. It'll leave me alone. Uh, and you, there's no way of avoiding that. But I want to do as right as I can. I want to do as right as I can. Dear Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you'd help me. Help me, Lord, to do right, to be honest, to treat people right, and to treat people the way I want them to treat me. And God, and be a witness and a soul winner be a good example of a preacher and a, and a pastor and a daddy and a, and a, and a, a, a husband and a, and a witness and a soul winner and a leader. God help me, Lord, help me. I'm a sorry. I'm a sorry. God help me, Lord. I need help, God. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me, oh God. Have mercy upon me, oh God. Lord bless everybody here tonight. Lord have mercy on our church. Grow and prosper for the glory of God. Fill this place full during the camp meeting with power and the Holy Ghost. We'll thank you for it. Now, Lord, do what ought to be done in our life. We go our separate ways this week. Bless everybody here tonight. Do what ought to be done. God will give you the glory for what you do. For we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. So I'm still praying tonight. Amen. So I'm still praying. That's all right. Amen. 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 All right. All right. We're going to have just a little quick meeting. Some of you men right up here. We'll talk about our, our roof job coming up. If you guys can help us probably a week from Monday. That's our plan right now. One week from tomorrow. The guy's going to be off preaching tomorrow. We'd have him down here.